Hello and welcome to Versus Live. I'm Ross Merriam. I'm Corey Ballmeister. And we've got Dan in the booth. Say hi, Dan. Hi, Dan. <laughs> Dan will be taking all of your questions, comments, concerns, and burns in the chat. Make sure you tag at Star City Games so he can see them and send his favorites over to us. Oh, yeah. We are preparing for what would have been SCG Baltimore yeah. weekend, but instead we are not doing that, but playing all the same decks because the show was already planned. Yeah, great. That's how life works sometimes. <laughs> and I roll with it, and that's what we're doing. We're rolling with it. Yeah, you know, I mean, Pioneer is still... It, it's, it's better than I thought. After the no bannings um, with Dig Through Time, like, I just haven't played because we've been focusing on Modern for so many weekends in a row um, that I thought it was going to be a little stale and it was just going to be all Inverter. But I, I found a deck that I was going to play that was non-Inverter. I was going to be playing Blue-White. That one coming up later in the show. Yeah, yeah, you definitely will. Um, but I was pretty excited. I was having a lot of fun actually getting back into it, and I didn't I didn't necessarily think I would in the non-banning uh, of Inverter yeah. decks at all, you know? Yeah, there's been some significant yeah. shifts in the metagame, some new decks emerging and, and rising, and you're going to see... The one here in this first match where I'm playing Mono Green Devotion, yep. uh, devised by Aspiring Spike, uh, and uh, you know with a wish, a complete wish sideboard between Vivian and Karn. It's a very Planeswalker heavy, really cool deck. Uh, and a lot of the, you know, there's been a heavy response to Inverter, and yep. to some degree, you know, the, the Inverter decks have been contained. Their win rate on Magic Online is, is much lower over the last couple of weeks. Um, you know, I, I think in part because of this deck is supposed to have a good inverter matchup, but also the rise of Mono White Devotion that you'll see later in the show. Yep, yep. Uh, has really, you know, solidified itself as a tier one archetype. I think that's the big one because I look at White Devotion and just as a deck playing against non inverter matchups with that deck, it feels terrible to me. Like it just not does not feel like a real deck, you know, and a deck that I don't think would exist if the metagame wasn't so condensed where inverter is taking over in such high numbers. I really don't think that deck would be good. Yeah. You know, I mean, I think it would have to change. Maybe people would still try to play it, but that is showing how the metagame is so condensed into the small amount of decks that something like that is good just because it has a good matchup against the best deck. Yeah, yeah. We're, we're definitely seeing some, you know, significant reaction to mm -hmm. Murder and Salt and Delirium uh, and, and those top decks that have been doing well over the last couple of weeks. We've seen a significant decline in aggressive <clears throat> decks. We're only playing one aggro deck and six decks today. Yep. Um, so, you know, but th those shifts have left us with a, still a relatively healthy metagame. You can't, mm -hmm. aggro is not in a great place, but you can still play it. Yep. Um, and, you know, you can definitely still play Inverter, Sultai, these Devotion decks, Mono White and Mono Green, mm -hmm. um, you know, and then Azorius Control, which is the deck that you were going to play this weekend. Yeah. Uh, so that's sort of the slate that we have. These are decks that we thought would show up this weekend and do relatively well. Um, you know, some of the more popular acts, and this is what the Pioneer metagame is right now. Yeah. Definitely different than what it was a month ago. Yeah. So something you said, I want to I wanna just take a second to talk about um, one really good lesson when it comes to getting ready for a tournament like this in a format that is kind of, I wouldn't say stale, but it is figured out, and it it has the top decks that are rising here. There's basically like three decks that are being played right now. In a super condensed metagame like this, you are able to play these decks like blue-white control, because you think about it, all the, just like you said, all the aggressive decks aren't really being played right now, right? They got kind of pushed to the side, and it's just like three decks of, at the top. So I was playing blue-white just because it's very easy to figure out how to beat three decks, right? So this is a time, this would have been the time where I think something would have popped out um, at the open, like Blue White Control, that would have actually won the tournament instead of just Inverter being the best deck or whatever, you know? So said yeah. we'll have to see them showcase today and you know check out some online results from this weekend. But that's what we have for y'all. Uh, I'm playing Mono Green Devotion, like I said. Mm -hmm. This deck is really cool. I've played a little bit with it early this week. Um, and uh, you know, the the Planeswalkers really give you a lot of options. You know, the sideboard is yeah. literally 15 one of I'm not going to do any sideboarding. When you come back from break, you're going to see an empty, <laughs> empty side of, of the table over here. Yeah. Um, and, and that's what you do in every single matchup. And you just take advantage of these really powerful Planeswalkers. And uh, it was really the power of Karn in Pioneer. Nobody really explored that card. Aspiring Spike really thought that card had potential. And he's been doing really well with the deck. Other people have. And he's been putting Karn into other shells, too. He's got some Aboros Karn deck that he's playing, been mm. playing this week. So Seems it, pretty good against the White Devotion deck. Karn just shuts off the combo. Yeah. That's okay. kind of cool. Karn, yeah. is, Karn is in a good position right here. Yeah. Uh, it also lets you, you know, find Tormont's Crypt and immediately shut down that quick combo out of Inverter. 
Mm. Uh, lets you find Damping Sphere against Lotus Field. Yeah. Uh, a lot of other options. You know, Walking Ballista against aggressive decks. So yeah. uh, you know, hopefully you'll get to see some of those options on display. But and let's get real. You're for sure going to win. Anytime we've played a Nissa deck that's been in your hand, you have pretty much won every time. There's a few things true about versus Live. You win with every Nissa deck, and nobody wins with blue-white control. We're going to change both those things today. <laughs> <laughs> We're not going to change both of them right now because you're going to be playing mono black aggro. Yep, yep. I'm playing mono black aggro. Nothing really too different. Not really reinventing the wheel on this one. I still think the deck was in a decent spot because it has an okay inverter matchup. Its soul tie matchup is a train wreck, but I do think soul tie was going to be on the downslope a little bit, and that's why I wanted to play blue white again um, because that matchup's pretty close. Yep. But soul tie was. In my opinion, I think Sultai would have been a very scary thing to take to Baltimore just because everybody's playing the white deck to just, you know, say, get out of here, inverter, you know? Yeah. And that's like a bad matchup, too. Yeah. Yep. All right. How's your hand? Um, It is reasonable. Okay. <laughs> Mine's good. Yep. Okay. Forest. I was just mocking you. No big deal. No big deal. Okay, so we're gonna start here. We have a choice uh, of one drop or disruption here. The mono green ramp aspect can definitely have holes in it where you need every single piece. So I tend to like to thought seize first. Um, God, it wasn't fatal push. <laughs> Never be a fatal push. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> But Impressive. I got two Wolf of Haven. So Impressive. Like <laughs> okay. Well, now here's the question. Do I want to try to deal with the accelerant, which usually just doesn't work in my experience, or just try to deal with some of the problem cards like Vivian or Nyssa? That seems better to me. If I don't have Nyssa, how am I going to win? I know. That's why I want to take it. That's why I want to take it. So I think it's either... Well... It's not these. <laughs> That's what I'm narrowing it down. I think I'm going to take Vivian here just because it's faster. This card can be quite a problem. Okay, you're at 18. All and right. Now I really want to draw land because then I can play both Wolf Wall of Havens. Here you go. <laughs> Easy game. Easy game. Easy game. Easy life. <laughs> okay. So we'll enchant on the untapped forest, then make okay. two green. And uh, because of things like Nyssa and Voyaging Seder, we want to just keep stacking them up. Okay. Uh, you have no way to deal with the land, so. All right. Now, just going to play a scrounger, scrounger and pass to you. A scroungy do. A scroungy. Okay, so now we can make five mana and play a turn three Nissa. Yep, of course. That's how my life works. <laughs> and if I were to untap this land, it would then tap for four, and I could only play a two, three Hydra. That doesn't fight the scrounger. It could make it a four, five. That doesn't seem worth it. I think I'll just untap this one and get in for three. Okay, I'll block. That is not how it works. <laughs> 15 to 20. Yep. Pass the turn. All right. I will... Definitely got to deal with Nissa here, so we'll just Murderous Rider here, or Swift then. Brings you to 13. We have no tokens down! Oh no, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'll attack for three. I'm at 17. Okay, here we go. Okay, uh, attack for three. Down to 12? To 10, right? Because you lost two from the swift end. Oh, yeah, 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 you're right. Okay, we drew a land, so three, four, five, six. We can play a four, five Hydra and fight the Scrounger. Okay. Pass the turn. Pretty happy about that fight. Why? I The double I was way scarier to me. I don't know. You have a bunch of removal. That's true. Um. Okay, so now we just got to play a little defense. Um... Kind of want to get this Murderous Rider out there, as well as <clears throat> one of our other threats. Yeah. Let's go like this. Here you go. Oh, don't need it anymore. Thank you. <laughs> it's off an adventure. <laughs> um... I feel like I'm in a lot of trouble here. Hmm. What you got? You draw some good ones? I did. Wow, you're, you're lucky. two good ones. You are lucky. I don't know which one to play or <laughs> how, what to do. Nice problem to have. 
Yeah, I'm, I, I think this matchup probably is pretty rough. Green Planeswalkers are just so tough because they always give value the turn they come into play. So even if you're able to remove the Planeswalker, you still get something out of it. And I think that's a big problem for Mono Black. That being said, I'm still going to dunk on you in this match, but sure. Uh, I'm going to play a Vivian. Oh, okay. I'm dead. And put uh, a counter here and a counter here. Okay. And attack you for nine. That's pretty good. That way, Corey doesn't have a double block. I thought about putting two counters here, but then you just double block one of the three threes. Yeah, I would, I would have been happy to do so. Yeah. Yeah, I... um. It does not force a block, but... Yeah, I'm going to take it. I'm down to one. I'm down to one. Pass turn. All right. That's probably not a great draw. It's going to be hard for Corey to both answer Vivian and play defense against his life total. Here go. <laughs> Search for walking blist. <laughs> I would have killed myself on my upkeep. Yeah, but I can't let you do that. That's true. Thanks, buddy. You're a good friend. Yeah, that didn't look great. That didn't look great. Yeah, I mean, if you'd had the fatal push on the elf, I guess I did draw the land, but that would have slowed me down a lot. A lot, a lot, yeah. yep. Um, but that instead, I have a, a pretty strong opening there that was at, you know, turn three Nissa through Thoughtseize. Yep, yep. Uh, you know, and, and just take over from there. Yeah, maybe I should have just went after the Haven. I don't know. What do you, what would you have done in that thought, Cease? Um, I like because I ended up guessing wrong in hindsight since you drew another Vivian, anyways, and I took Vivian, so sure. that was just bad luck. But yeah, I, I think taking Vivian makes a lot of sense because yeah. it's unlikely that I'm going to draw land, so I'm probably not missing for a little while. You have one way to answer a Planeswalker, yeah, uh, and you're not super worried about my fast development. I just happen to hit the land and really punish you. Mm -hmm. But it's you know I'm. I mean, I'm close to a coin flip, right? I have 22 lands on the deck, so I'm 21 out of three. <coughs> yeah. Um, so you're looking at just under 40%. Mm -hmm. But So take your 60% and hope. Yeah, it's pretty close. Well, regardless, I lost the first game. We are going to head to sideboarding where I'm guessing only I'm going to be doing something. Yeah, and no, I like to... <laughs> <laughs> you like to mix it up a bit? Yeah. Uh, we're going to bring take... In, bring in one of everything. I like it. We're going to take a short break, and we'll be right back with sideboarding here on Versus Live. All right, and welcome back to sideboarding here on Versus Live. For me, a very easy card to bring in. Lifebane Zombie, I think it's just unreal good. Obviously, uh, only against green and white decks. But there's a lot of the, there's a lot of those around right now. Being able to pressure planeswalkers with intimidate as well as being able to take a timely, you know, maybe Jade Light Ranger if I'm on the play or something like that could be very Voracious good. Hydra really is Voracious good. Hydra is a good one too, yeah. It it is unfortunate that I can't take, you know, Vivian or Nissa or anything like that, but it's still fine. I also have a consideration to bring in Fungal Infection, but this is something I'm going to bring in on the draw. On the play, I think I can just be a little bit more proactive, and I think it's 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 good enough there. Um, so we're going to take out Drag the Underworld. It's, it's just pretty slow. We have enough good removal that I don't want to um, uh, play this. And then uh, taking out a Marauder because it's essentially this card. No real point uh, to have it. And then taking out one Scroggers, because I think it's one of the weaker cards in the matchups. Okay. What uh, are you doing? So on my side, I know I said before the break that I wasn't going to do any sideboarding. And I meant it. I'm not. Oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Are you happy with yourself about that? Yes. Bamboozled. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I am. Dan, you got any questions for us? Yeah, uh, we got a few. All right. So, um... We did a uh, modern back on Tuesday, and we didn't yep. cover a lot of stuff, especially since that once upon a time has since been banned. Yep. Um, someone was asking about since once upon a time is now banned, would Titan decks uh, go back to like uh, ancient stirrings? I actually was playing a. Uh, I was making a video yesterday. Playing a little bit of modern and turn one ancient stirrings and revealed cavern. I'm just like, what is this deck? <laughs> like, I, it was just so far out of my mind that ancient stirring was in that deck. It seems like so long ago. But yeah, I, I think that is the first place that makes sense to go to. And that's what people are going to do right away. It doesn't mean that's going to be the final thing and it's going to be correct because the deck has changed quite a lot since... Stirrings yeah. was in it, so I, I I think it's I think it's where people will go right away. But I'm interested in just like explore as well, you know. I I could even see like adventurous impulse. Adventurous impulse. Yeah, that's adventurous. Uh, I, I think they need to dig for creatures because not only yeah. is it finding Titan, like finding Dryad is now really important. That's uh, true. I do think that's you true. need to replace some of that functionality. That is true. Digging three, not as good as digging five. Yeah. But. 
Yep, but bit minor change for sure, but once upon a time is gonna be a hit for that deck, that's for sure. That was uh that was quite strong. Dan, you got one more question for us? Yeah, from uh Arch Magus Colin. Uh do you think there is a viable pioneer or standard deck that uses uh Pelucranos Unchained? Long time listener, first time uh, caller. First time <laughs> caller. Um, I, I saw one good soul tie list um, for standard that was just, you know, essentially just ramp, had some Pelucranos action, Cavaliers to flip it over, and it looked okay. But I, I, I just think that card has seemed pretty clunky, you know? Yeah. yeah. Like, the fact that it loses the counters as you're fighting means, like, you fight something and then what you have left over is not very impactful. Yeah. So you're paying a lot. Well, if you that. escape it, it, it starts at 12, you know? <laughs> yeah, then you, you can fight, like, one. Yeah. Time. But that's, like, the, the... Yeah, it just takes a lot of time to realize value out yeah. of that card. Uh, and so... It just seems like a dud. Like how much like are you escaping of? that for? I think it's six. And six yeah. cards? Six and six cards, yeah. I think it feels like a one-of to me, just like Elspeth's son's nemesis or whatever in blue-white. You know, just as that one thing where when you're out of, when you're attritioned out, you can just still have something to do. I don't think, am I boring you? Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> it's just this Carnox chair is so comfortable. Oh yeah, you really need an it. It really is. It really is. But um, I yeah, do, I do like that as a role player. Like Pelucanos does seem like it fits that. Yeah, yeah, seems about right. Okay, so I'm gonna be on the play. Oh my god. Well, he decides I'm gonna take a nap. All right. Oh, well, I'm mulliganing. Oof. Um, <laughs> okay, let's take a look at my hand, and I have no one or two mana plays, and I'm on the draw, so this is also mulligan. All right, perfect. All Dan, right. do you dare to have one more question? Yes, I do. <laughs> uh, from Dradaris, uh, what are you guys' thoughts on a somewhat uh, budget pioneer uh, tribal rogue deck running the likes of Robber of the Rich, Glint and Sleeve Siphoner, uh, Geyer Reach Bandit, and either Rankle or Gaunty? What, what are your payoffs for playing a bunch of rogues? Like Robber of the Rich kind of? Is Robber the only thing? Yeah, there's got to be s some synergy except just... Unclaimed territory to help your mana base? Yeah. Like, uh, I, anytime you build a tribal deck, you got to tell me what the payoffs are. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, Robert the Rich is okay and stuff. And I feel yeah. it's pretty tough to be like, is this deck viable? Because I just play competitive all the time, so I will more than likely a budget version is not going to be viable because you're missing out on very good, powerful cards, you know? Yeah. They're expensive for a reason, but... Uh, I, I don't know what other rogue payoffs exist. Well, I can't it think could, of any it other could go Grixis, and then you could possibly do stuff like with uh, Brazen Borrower, Agent of Treachery. Yeah, a but... Tribal payoff there. Yeah, but there's not... Yeah. So, like, why are you putting a bunch of rogues in your deck other than to call it a rogue deck? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> hey, calling stuff a rogue deck is sweet. Wow. This deck loves me. So That's a no-lander. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> um... Hmm. Mulliganing into Oblivion over here. With Cory on five cards, I think I want to put a land on the bottom and just play Attrition if necessary. Cut. Could come back to bite me, but... I hope so. No. All right. We're going to be keeping basically anything at this point. And this hand's great if it was seven cards. Um. No, but this hand is very good. Now, what do I want to send back... Um, I think I want to send back this and this. We're going to be a little greedy, hoping for a little help from the top of our deck. All right, ready? Knight, go. Uh, tap for green. Okay. okay. All right. <laughs> okay, I will attack. Noble. 19. 19. Thoughts easy. you? I drew another land, so. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I just cannot beat Nissa when it comes down, so I got to take that. You're at 18. I'll go to 18 and play another one of these. Here you go. If you had a second Thoughts in your night would have gotten bigger. That's true. That's oh, true. Sweet. That is an awesome synergy. Dealing yourself for. Uh, Burning Tree Emissary. Okay. There's a mana floating play. Jade Light. Okay. Uh, don't want another elf. We want to dig towards impactful cards. Yep. And Karn, we will leave there. That's pretty impactful. Pass the turn. All right. And we're dead. 
Go. <laughs> I don't have the third land. It's uh, pretty rough. Uh, I don't want to play Voracious Hydra into a potential Fatal Push, even though I don't think it's there. Uh, and I do want to get Karn down. So let's do that. Okay. And let's minus it and get, oh, Sky Sovereign Console Flagship. That seems like a That sounds pretty one. sweet. <laughs> Pass the turn. All right. Yeah, we did get the land, but it's a little too late. Um, I, even if Corey tries to send both here, I'll just block both. Yeah. Essentially, kill one. He'll have to pump. He'll eat. You know, Jade Light Ranger will trade for it. Yeah, that won't be great. It'll be the the end result. All right, I guess I'll go like that. Take my voracious aggro. Yep. Year go. Okay. We go in boat and Ross. Yep. We didn't rip a land, but we can minus and get Dark Steel Citadel. Yeah, that's pretty nice. So had it all wrapped up. And boat time. <laughs> I have uh, non-fond <laughs> memories of losing to that card, and they're um, just coming back. So the boat can block Life Bane Zombie. Yep. Do I want this? But so I think I just want to kill a knight. <laughs> the problem is, in order for boat to block Life Bane Zombie, then I'd have to chump here. But that's fine. If you're gonna spend. If I occupy your mana that way and boat just eats creatures, yeah. that's fine. So I think I want to kill an... No, I guess for this turn, let's just kill the life bane. Okay. You still only have... Yeah, we're in the same situation. You can go. Okay. Yeah, we're in the same situation as last turn. We'll just not block with the boat. Go. I am dead. Um... So I can just plus this on this and attack for five without having to crew. It still has flying and all its other abilities. Just turns it into a creature, right? Yeah. Okay. So beginning combat. What? <laughs> Dead boat. So you go to 16. Yep. And Dead boat. Harbor Master is very cross with you. Uh, <laughs> Who is? The Harbor Master. The Harbor Master. Okay. <laughs> um, like, Why is there a dead boat? <laughs> you can go. All right. So I would like to be able to get this Karn off the battlefield so you can stop gaining value. But it's pretty awkward with uh, two knights right now. So they're not very good. Um... Hmm. All right, we're just going to go these two creatures and pass to you. That's a pretty good draw. Uh, so what will that allow us to do? Knight of the Ebon Legion has not felt like as good as, like when it was in Vampires, you know, it was just an insane card, but Knight of the Ebon Legion and Pioneer has been really bad. Mm. It's still pretty good. I mean, it's a good card, it's, but it's it, it hasn't been as defining, um, you know, as it was in previous formats and stuff. Um, so why don't we can do it this way, right? So if I minus Karn, get the Great Henge, I have a four power creature, so that's going to cost five. Then I can cast it with this. Uh, because I have five devotion and then have essentially five mana left over, which is what I want anyway. Seems pretty good. Great Henge is a beating. Okay. Two blockers. You won't be able to kill the Karn. Okay, yeah. That's perfect. So let's minus two the Karn. Okay. I will get the Great Henge. <clears throat> I will make five green with Nykthos. Play the Great Henge because I have a four power creature. Yep. Then gain two life, go to 21. Okay. Play another Karn. Minus this Karn, get Pithing Needle, and cast okay. Pithing Needle on Knight of the Ebon Legion. That's pretty dirty. Pass the turn. All right. Need a good draw here. And now we're going to have a bajillion mana next turn, and we'll just get Walking Ballista and start cleaning everything. Oh, that, that was a good draw. Swift in that. Attack Karn. Yeah, that is pretty good. So you go to 14. Yep. Uh, I'm just going to block a Knight and yep. eat it. I lose my Karn. All right. Go. Um, so now we're back to only five green here. So make five green, 
Uh, play another card. Oh my god. Oh yeah. So many cards. Got another land. So okay. this is three, four, five, six. So we'll minus. Uh, find walking ballista. Ballista with the great hand just pretty absurd. Yeah. Go to twenty three. Yep. Play a three three ballista that enters with an extra counter. So it's a yep. four four. Yep. And and you draw a card. And I draw a card. Yeah, that's how that works. Uh, and then pass the turn. All right. Everything is fine. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I just can't possibly win. I'm getting Verterous Gear Hulk with the car next. Oh time. my god! Okay, <laughs> <Yes>. okay. <laughs> god, do I miss Verterous Gear Hulk? That card is messed up. <laughs> All right, well that didn't feel great. It was a mulligan to five, so uh, we'll give it. Uh, we'll give it that. But yeah, that was not great. That was a beating. You got to see Karn do some cool stuff. Yep. I'm not sure if I. Did I find all? Oh, the Citadel. There we go. Well, you beat me so quickly, we might as well extend this to a best three out of five, huh? Yeah. I wished for six cards with Karn. That is <laughs> impressive. Girl. It's so cool. <laughs> that is impressive. Yeah. Yep. All yeah. right. Uh, let's see. Got the entire side we're working. I like it. I like it. Good thing you didn't take out those Vivians and cards, <laughs> I guess. <Yeah>. Let's, <laughs> take a, let's take a question from uh, Crispy724. Um, how do you guys feel about the blue white devotion list running around Pioneer? It's essentially the Heliod combo, but I've it also this. splashes for um Dragon Lord Ojitai. Yeah, Dragon Lord Ojitai and like Little Teferi and stuff. I think it looked great. So I played a couple of games with just the white devotion to test it. Um against Inverter. And I just didn't like it. I was like still it I wasn't winning enough to make me want to play that deck, you know? But then I looked at the blue-white one, and I was like, wow, this list seems a lot better. But then I'm like, ah, I'm just not going to play a Heliod deck. <laughs> <laughs> so then I got off it. But I think that list looks awesome. Yeah, those are both really powerful yeah. cards. Yeah. Uh, I've never really liked Arcanus Owl, and I assume that's one of the cards that they've trimmed. I think so. Ojitai's on the high end. Yeah. The card advantage. I think so. But yeah, then you get, like, some blue counter spells. I think you get, like, gusts in the board. Like, that deck looks sweet. It did well at a recent Pioneer Challenge or something. Yeah. Yeah. Check no. it out. Makes sense to me. Sounds good. Yeah, I want to try it. I'm still in the market for a different type of blue-white deck, but... All right, I'll go first. No mulligans over here, hopefully. Oh, yeah, we got a keeper. keeper. Now you're in trouble. Uh, Yeah, this is a keep for me. It's not great, but All right. definitely in the keep range. Here you go. Oh, yeah, get that out of there. Get that out of there. All right, Scrounger, here you go. We did draw another Accelerant, which is nice. So okay. We'll Haven up a land. All right. Um, attack for three. 17. Um, all right, your turn. Not the greatest turn for us. Vivian plus with no targets. All right, kill it. Kill it. I expected that to happen, but I want to draw that out. Yep, not a bad idea. All right, I'm gonna go with Urborg and Rankle. Let's go. I go to 11. All right, modes, I'm definitely gonna choose discard. And do we wanna draw? I do kind of wanna draw a little bit more action. You probably have your next turn already pretty mapped out. So I think drawing a card is not really too punishing. So yeah, let's discard and draw. So you discard first. Yep. Yeah. So I'm a 10, you're at 17? Yep. All right, you go. I knew I should have taken the risky line. <laughs> Gotta risk it to get the biscuit, they say. Who says that? Someone. Okay, I'll play Nissa, which okay. has a good chance of dying, but gotta do what I have. Okay, okay. For three. All right. And you're at 14. 14. That's the turn. All right. The Nissa doesn't die, then we might be able to get back into this. Oh, it's dead. Um, let's start with a push on the forest. And we'll swift end that. So you go to 12. 12, and then we'll attack you. Go to four. For sure, discard, and got you four. I do want you to go to three. Okay, discard and draw. Put you to three, so both of these are lethal. <clears throat> draw a card. Discard and draw. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. 
Um, yeah, actually, losing the forest was really bad. If I had six mana next turn, I could get there. Get where? Uh, Karn, find, um, Heart of Kieran. Oh, Use okay. Karn to crew it, walk here. Oh, you're still dead. You're oh, three. yeah, I need two yeah. blockers. Mm -hmm. So, if I need two blockers, then none of the planeswalkers <laughs> are good. And uh, I'm at three, and I need a flying blocker. Yeah, I just don't know what I can possibly draw. Yeah, it doesn't seem likely. Past you, I think Rankle would probably be one of the most important cards in yeah. this matchup. Just yeah. flying evasion and being able to maybe have you sack a creature if I can if I can control you. Yeah. I think the big thing is just fatal pushing your elf. You know, that's one thing I haven't done in any of the games except this, you know? Worked out pretty well. Oh yeah. Don't call it a comeback. <laughs> All right, Dan, you got a question? Uh sure. Uh let's go with uh uh, 727 degree. Okay. Um, <laughs> in modern, does infect seem like a good choice, seeing as how we're moving towards like somewhat bigger decks in that sense? I think it seems pretty bad right now because we're starting to see all these like Renin 6 snow control decks pop up or like Soltai Uro, like those type of decks just kind of smash. Uh, in fact, but I think in fact was a good choice like three four weeks ago. Yeah when amulet was bigger and these snow control decks and yeah. sanctuary mystic sanctuary decks uh, And like breach yet. decks were were up too, which yeah. you know having a fast clock with in fact seems pretty good but, but now that the metagame is very dense with these high interaction decks. Yeah, I would not touch in fact No, no really any would I. combo deck and Almost no creature deck, you know? Like, <laughs> if your creature is not Urza or Uro, I feel like you're in not the greatest spot in Modern. But once again, I mean, I've said it before, Modern is great right now. You can really play anything and have some success if you have a nice tune list for a metagame, yeah. you know? I do think humans could have success, some success in yeah. the metagame. Ren yeah. and 6 is a problem, but the lists that don't have Ren, they have a lot of, like, expensive counter spells like yeah. and stuff. And there's not many that have Ren, to be yeah. honest. It's, like, just Abe Corbin's... Uh, list, and there's so. not that many that have sweepers. You're not seeing a lot of supreme verdicts and anger of the gods and yeah. things like that in this meta game. So I think humans could be in a good spot as far yeah. as creature decks go. But I think you're right. Yeah, infect and not so much. Yeah, humans could be good. Very proactive, dangerous. Dangerous. I'm on the play here for game four, and I have no one and two drop. Yes. This is bad, and uh, yeah, I'm gonna mulligan. I think I'm gonna keep this. It has a little bit of redundancy that is not great, but we can do our things. We have a nice uh, turn one, turn two, so we're living it. We are living. We are living it. All speaking right. Speaking of living it, Dan. Yes. Do your thing. All right. That does uh, not speaking of it. <laughs> Stuntman Mike eleven seventeen <clears throat> asks, uh, where should I move? Yeah, where should I move to in hopes of improving my magic career? Well, come down to beautiful Florida. No, <laughs> come down to Roanoke. No, that's probably not true. We don't necessarily have a huge uh, yeah. magic scene. If you we want to make it to. easy to attend tournaments and get your reps in, like, the mid-Atlantic, you know, like yep. D.C. area and up into, like, Philly area yeah, uh, would be good, and really anywhere in, like, Ohio or Indiana. Or, like, Michigan. They have a... Their store, they just have so many great players that come out of that, you know? Yeah. Like, Raja, um... um Kyle Bogamus. Kyle yeah. Bogamus. Yeah, uh, the, the, the RAW, Zach Allen's from there, too. Andrew. Um, uh, Alan Bogan, yep. Yep, yep. He's up there. So, yeah, those three places all good. Yeah. Also the Northeast. They're great up there. Yeah, yeah. But honestly, mm -hmm. to get better at Magic, I I think being able to, you know, be around tournaments all the time, like for, for the SCG tournaments, you know, when they resume, um, I, I think is a very good way to improve your game. Like, yeah. I've already felt an improvement in my game just being able to go to tournament after tournament metagame for each one You know like it, it's been a challenging thing, but I, I've very much loved it You can't really recreate the experience of live tournaments. Yeah, being you able can't. to get repetitions there is important and being able to like have a team Like we're lucky enough to do to be able to have a group chat where we're trying to metagame for the next tournament and stuff like that It's uh, it, it's really something special. Okay. Uh, this hand is perfectly fine. Definitely gonna put a forest back. We got All right. lands. Bring it. Start on forest elvish mystic. God, you're so lucky. All right. Um, let's go. Once again, I have the decision to uh, be aggressive here or try to disrupt. Eat. And I'm gonna thoughtsies again. Well, you're gonna take Anissa because the rest of my hand is mana. Okay. Yep. Yeah, let's do that. 
You're at 18. Here we go. Now, will you please just not top deck a Planeswalker on a timely turn one time? Jack for one. I'll block. <laughs> 17. Yep. You're up. Just one time, Ross. Um, Muta Vault and Scrounger. Here you go. Okay, Vivian. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> um, I quit. I don't know. So I have two options here. I can try to be the aggressor and put two counters on land rails and attack. Or I can try to play defensively and put a counter on each and try to block. Um, and I don't know which is better. So I make the blocking play. and it, I'm just happy you didn't draw Nyssa. At this point, I just have to be lucky that you didn't get a Nyssa. Yeah, this is definitely the weakest <laughs> of the Planeswalkers, especially in this matchup where, like... It's still pretty good. Yeah, it's yeah. definitely still good. Yeah. I'm not complaining, but... Sound like you're complaining. No. Uh, so... If you... You can just negative three and fight. It's not a fight. It's my creature doing damage, Whatever. But. So what can I get next turn if I uh, wish? Nothing, but like, particularly awesome. Get, like, Walking Ballista or something, Ballista. right? I can get Gear Hulk and, like, make a pretty big battlefield. Yeah. I can get Scavenging Ooze if I trade and then immediately exile the Scrounger. But all those things kind of, like, die to more removal, but... Is it, if you have a swift end, I'm not going to be able to wish anyway. Mm -hmm. If I go the aggressive route, this thing's dying in a couple turns. I don't think the aggressive route gets me anywhere good, so I think I want to try to be defensive. Okay. So counters on each and pass. All right. Okay. Um. Well, I can get in there with Mutavolt. I was hoping you took the aggressive line and just missed Mutavolt. We're just going to be able to take it down. That would have been nice. Yeah. I can't believe I'd... I'd, I'd <laughs> Stumbled into the right play, I guess. Yeah, there you go. Um, now the question is, do I want to still attack with Mutavolt and offer the trade, or just try to progress my battlefield a little bit here? Um, it's pretty close. It's pretty close. Um, I think I'm going to hold Mutavolt back for now. We're going to attack. Okay, I'll block. Okay. And swift end. <laughs> Go. So now I have the option of uh, wishing with the Vivian. That you do. Not sure if I want to do that. Because so I can just create more blockers and create more devotion. Yeah. I think because I drew a spell, I'm just holding another land. So let's make a four green. Okay. One green floating. Jade light. Okay. Let's leave the Nissa there. Wow. <laughs> uh, and then I will plus Vivian and put counters on each of them. So they both have three toughness and can effectively block champion immutable. Okay. And then I will pass the turn. Lame. Nissa on top, huh? Well, I thought I had a decent shot at this this turn, but staring at a Nyssa is going to be quite scary. Got a wrinkle. A wrinkly boy. A little wrinkly. Um. <clears throat> yeah, this is tough. That's a tough spot to get out of. My attacks aren't good with these unless I wanted to pump and trade with a Jade Light. That's also pretty bad. I guess you would have to put both in front. But then you probably just don't even care and you just let Vivian, Vivian get hit. Um, hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Yeah, not a great turn for Corey over here. Not a great turn for the good guys. Spawn Mayhem. Uh, I do have a Rankle. I have the Rankly boy. But it's just not very good. Agreed. It's just not very good right now. It's very good if you didn't play Jade Light. <laughs> you know, being able to hit your Land of War and make you discard, and then you're not able to. Nissa would have been great. Um, but instead, I think I'm just going to head at you. We're going to... I'm at 17. Do I care to make you discard? Not really... 
Let's go with Sack a Creature and Draw a Card. So both of these cards represent the same amount of mana because of the Nykthos, but this is slightly bigger, and I need to tap this to generate the second mana, essentially, whereas I don't with this. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to get rid of the Elf. Let's discard two. I have a... This card is not great. I have a Forest. Okay. So I'm at 16. You're at 16? Yep. And then I'll say go and get a counter. So this is five green. That's convenient. Okay. Let's play Nissa. Shocked. Plus here. Was there ever a doubt that Nissa was going to be in play after I thought sees it on turn one? <laughs> Absolutely not. Um, How many cards have you drawn and you still have two Planeswalkers in play? Like six? <laughs> It's a lot of Planeswalkers. You're so lucky. <laughs> so lucky, Ross um, Merriam. So I've got a lot of options now with this uh, Vivian. I guess we're playing this land. Uh, I can, you know, kind of plus and shove damage with you at 16. Uh, oh, yeah. And attack for nine. That doesn't seem great uh, because you'll have a good crack back. I can minus three and deal with this Rankle, which I like. But I have plenty of mana left over here. I've got six mana because of the Nissa, so I could wish for any creature. That means 3-3 three, three Ballista, not great. Scavenging News, pretty good, given that you have Scrounger, Bloodsoak Champion in the graveyard. Um, but it doesn't really deal with the Rankle, and it doesn't block the Knight, because the Knight can always pump. Um, I can get Questing Beast and make this an attack for, what, 11 and put you to 5. Um the that's, beat downs. Yeah, that's kind of interesting. So, a, a lot of options here, actually. Yeah, no kidding. Um, you have two cards in hand? Yep. I'm not too concerned about the creatures in the graveyard. If that's what you're spending your mana on, they're not really impactful on this battlefield, so I don't think the scavenging use play is good. Um, the plus play, I don't think is as good as Questing Beast, because it's less damage, and I'm uh, more all-in on these threats, even though it does leave less loyalty on the Vivian. So, I don't think plusing is good. And I don't think Ballista is good. Okay. So it's coming down to getting Questing Beast or killing Rankle. So get, getting the Questing Beast being the, a very aggressive play, killing the Rankle being a little bit more conservative. And with multiple Planeswalkers, I favor, I think, being conservative. Um, so I am going to just have the Jade Light deal forward to the Rankle. Okay. And um, I do kind of like just attacking for... Seven. I guess if you have a land, you could attack the Nissa down, but then you're still dead, right? Yeah, if you pump here, animate Mute Vault with a land, attack Nissa down for seven, then I have four, seven, plus two, this is nine, and you'd be at nine. So that's not a play you can make. And you have a Vigilant creature, so. Oh, yeah, this has Vigilant. <laughs> uh, yeah, let's just attack for seven. Okay, I'll take it. Put you nine. nine. Pass. Okay, we are dead. Um, <laughs> well, seven, I can chump block with knight to stay alive next turn and hope to deal with Nyssa. It's not a very good avenue to victory, but I don't think we have too much of an option. Um... Got another Rankle. It's pretty good. All right. I guess we'll just kill Vivian, and then we're going to have to chump to stay alive, and I'll pass to you. Best we got. Um, Burning Tree Emissary. Okay. Untap this. Attack for 10. Yep. A block. A four power. Brings you to three. Yep. Pass the turn. All right. And we're dead. <laughs> Yeah, yep. Just the fact that if you top deck a planeswalker, I just have no ways to deal with them. And you, like you said, you have a lot of them, you know? So yeah. it wasn't out of the realm for you to top deck one of your 12 <laughs> walkers. It's getting a little more wild that you top deck had two walkers in play that were both different, but uh, yeah. yeah. J Light Ranger helps dig towards things. It does, yeah. I yeah. have liked J Light Ranger quite a bit. J Light time. Ranger's amazing. Yeah. Honestly, it's just a really good card. And I mean, Devotion's the only shell that it's been good in, but I mean, it used to dominate standard, you know, when we had Wild Growth Walker and stuff like that. So it took a while to get us there. Yeah. So it didn't yeah. dominate right when it was printed. It took about the next year, really, until uh, once the. Uh, 
return to Ravnica hit. Yeah. And, and we got those Golgari decks. But that's yeah, true. That's true. They just, were they were powerful. This is a devotion deck that like has that ramp plan and this ability to go over the top. Like, if you didn't have an answer to the Vivian, mm -hmm. if I got to untap with that battlefield, I could make 15 mana on that turn. So yeah. Karn would, could f immediately find, um, you know, some gigantic thing. Yeah, is there uh, Ulamog? Do you have Ulamog at the yeah. top end? Probably, yeah. Yeah. No, I think the deck looks sweet. One problem I would uh, figure that it would have is probably Inverter. It seems like a pretty bad Inverter matchup. I think, wouldn't so, you think? Uh, so Karn is very good in that matchup, right? Is it? Yeah, uh, so like if you land Karn early, you get Tormont Script to stop them from uh, going off quickly. Yeah. And then you get Godfarer statue, and now they have to spend a bajillion mana to go off. Yeah, that's it's, true. It's, it's this combination that Karn is supposed to set up. Okay. Now, now they have a bunch more Heroes Downfalls these days. And Emrakul and um, stuff too, yeah. Yeah, you, you, you play, you, you're really good against their fair game. Sure. They choose that you're weak to the combo. Yeah. Uh, and Karn is sort of your hate piece against the combo because it finds good sideboard cards. Okay. Uh, but it really is your only one. So a quick combo draw requires a quick Karn from you. Yeah. But if they don't have a quick combo draw, you're usually in pretty good shape because you're able to, uh, you know, get Planeswalkers down and grind through their removal. Uh, but you really are, you're, you're weak to the combo. Yeah. So... Uh, I I was a little, I'll be honest, when I played the deck earlier this week, I was disappointed in the inverter matchup. I thought it would be better. Yeah. Um, I, I think you're honestly behind overall, but I don't think it, it's a train wreck by any means. Yeah. Uh, and, and that's how I even felt with like white devotion. It was like, it's like, sure, I might be a little ahead when I was testing that matchup, but it didn't feel enough to be like, okay, I should play this deck because I'm going to beat all the inverter decks. And I mean, that's why, you know, like Pete was still going to play inverter because it, you just, you just adjust your sideboard a little bit to deal with some of these matchups, like add some Ashiox for white devotion to be able to balance the hate cards and stuff. And inverter can adjust to it just as much as other decks are trying to adjust to beat it. Yeah. So that's the scary thing with the deck. Like it, it's it can do basically anything, and it's still a thought seize push deck, so you're able to interact with any deck. So yeah. No, yeah. The, the key to beating inverter is always going to be to figure out where their blind spot is on a given weekend. Yeah. What are they yeah. preparing for, and what are they, like, what are they not, and try to get into that space. Uh, and uh, you know, if but then the next week, you know, they're going to come prepared for you. So yeah. You always have to be shifting, and that's yeah. the the mark of a tier one deck. And that's just the mark of magic. Like, I mean, that's that's all it is. Like when me and Brad uh, top aided two GPs together in a row, and then I top aided the next two. Sick, Brad. And thank you, thank you. <laughs> all we were doing was just like meta gaming for the decks we played last week. It was so fun. Like when we were just going to four GPs in a row, we we're just like, okay, how do we beat the deck we just won with? You know, the last week because everybody picks up a deck that does well at the last week. So it, it was a weird dynamic to just be beating the deck that we played last week and I played four different decks you know like that's pretty cool yeah it was pretty sweet all right but with that is going to do it for match one Ross Merriam shockingly wins with Nissa who shakes the world on versus live like how are you not playing that card at tournaments more often I there are so few standard tournaments yeah yeah it doesn't see a ton of play in the other formats I guess you're going to be playing it the next ma next match no 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 oh, no. no I am I'm you, playing again. You'll be playing it again. Oh, man, again. I'm in trouble. You're usually the person playing Sultan. It is. So I wanted to try this. You've always played the White Devotion decks because, quite frankly, and I, I don't mean to put this so bluntly, but I thought the deck is heinous, to be honest. And I just, I'm always like, yeah, if you want to try it, you play it. I'll play something against you. But this is a matchup where people have said it's pretty good. Like, White Devotion up against Sultai Delirium was something that people were saying that's a reason to not play Delirium for this weekend because White Devotion was going to be the answer to Inverter. Um, so Sultai, I think, was going to be on the decline. I'm curious if that's true because it just seems like... It still seems like Sultai should have a good matchup. So... Ross has always played the White Devotion decks before and just played them so horribly that I figured I'd get a crack at it and actually play it with some grace here and see uh, how we can do it. It hasn't gone well when I've played it. But it it uh, hasn't. We'll I think we only tried it once. Yeah, we'll yeah. give you a shot after the break. How long do we need, Dan? Five. Five minutes. We'll be back. We'll be playing some Mono White Devotion, some Soul Tide Delirium. Don't go anywhere. 